Times and Pope, and they were fake. So <laughs> we talked about Gasly Graham Engels, and it's kind of a sad story, but uh, Feldstein knew that Graham Engels would disappear for days on Vendor. He was possessed by his own inner demons, he was a drinker, he was again, by all accounts, a very sweet guy, but they knew that he would just disappear. And uh, the scary thing is he would disappear with his art portfolio and his job, <laughs> and so they would push out his date knowing that if he made it, God willing, in time for that day, it was actually in advance of the real date that they needed to get the story in. So it, it, it depended on the artist. Some of them didn't need it that much. The other thing I was going to say about Johnny Craig is he, um, I don't know, either exclusively or for the most part, edited his own titles. So he was kind of in charge of when his story <coughs> were to anyway. Yeah, so the page count was much less. <laughs> Uh, but also there was a, a Murray Severn did a uh, did drawings of all the EC artists for a uh, Christmas party and things. And her drawing of Johnny Craig was him yawning and stretching and saying, Oh, I'm exhausted. I did one whole page. One whole panel. Panel. Sorry. Uh, I ruined one panel. Sorry, guys. Rewind. Make sure it was funny. And then there was alternatively a cartoon of Jack Davis drawing Johnny Craig and he was just feeding pages to him and shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Johnny Craig was the Jack Davis of his time. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, similar to how we were inspired by it by growing up. Uh, regarding the artists and the writers, how much do we know? Uh, were they inspired a lot by the, the cults of the 30s? And yes, they were. In fact, some of them in the 40s did art for the cults. Graham Ingalls kind of started doing cult illustrations. Uh, they were very inspired by that stuff, as were the plus of the stories inspired by those cults. So Bill Gaines had a copious library of literature. He had a bunch of science fiction collections, and he had the cult. And um, there's actually traceable sources for a lot of the EC stories from the cult. A couple examples, there's a Henry Kuttner story called Rats at Sharp Teeth. And um, no, it's called uh, The Graveyard Rats. The EC version is called Rats at Sharp Teeth. And it's a very faithful adaptation. There was one uh, when I was writing the introduction for one of the Jack Kamen books in the Spanish Graphics Collection that I identified that hadn't been identified before because I'm reading this story called I Was a Gargantuan. And I went, God, this is a lot like The Amazing Colossal Man. Wouldn't it be amazing if The Amazing Colossal Man was inspired by the TV story? So I started researching that and I realized that that would be a great story, but no, they were both inspired by a story by Homer Ian Clint from the 20s called The Nth Man. And the plots of the three are identical. <laughs> so obviously, Jack Kamen's story was probably written by Al Feldstein and was based on the Paul story, and then the Amazing Colossal Man was inspiration from the same Paul story, so it's just a coincidence that there's an EC story that has the exact same plot <laughs> that was done before the Amazing Colossal Man. But the answer is yes, a lot of Paul's influence.